Thank you for joining us in the Growth Now movement. We are Justin and Zach, two entrepreneurs who wanted to bring you people's amazing stories of inspiring growth in business and in life. So let the growth begin. Welcome to episode two of the Growth Now movement with Justin and Zach. We are super excited for our guest today, Pam Gockley. Pam Gockley is the CEO of the Vigilant Corporation, and she's also the author of two books, The Reputation Factor and The Art of Running Red Light. Uh, that is her newer book, and we'll talk a little bit more about that today and kind of dive in. But Zach and I are really excited to have Pam on because she was literally one of our first supporters of Jutbug when we first launched back in 2009, and we've really gotten to know her. Uh, and obviously, we have a really strong connection, which we were just talking about before we hopped on this call. But, but Pam, welcome, and thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. What fun. Yeah, ton of ton of fun, ton of fun. Um, but we wanted to start out by by having you talk about yourself a little bit. You know, uh, we we talked before the call here about your travels and your your public speaking. Why don't you tell us what's hot and happening right now in your life? Well, right now I uh, just published the second book. I'm doing a lot of speaking and a lot of consulting, which is uh, fabulous for me. I've been in business for 20 years. I've seen a a lot, a speaker, an author, a marketing guru. I work with social media. I help to um, do the transition of market of making a marketing message that follows the reputation strategy, which is it starts with you, but it's not about you. It's about your clients. And I really hold clients to the feet to the fire to make sure they're connecting with their clients. And they get out of their head and into their heart and they allow their, their clients to tell them why they use your products and services and that's our starting base. That's awesome. And I think really w- with business and where it's going is really about we're becoming, our, our heart is going more into businesses across the board. And you really kind of found this out a lot earlier. I mean, you talked about in your first book, The Reputation Factor. You know, to talk about how if your your reputation is super important and if you love what you're doing, you'll grow your client base. What what made you pick up on that so early? I actually picked up on that when the crash happened in 2008, the economy crash. It was like a perfect storm because we had, I call it the in, information revolution. Computers were cheap. Internet access was readily available. And then we were all uh, devastated by the economy. So we all got very smart and we all got very savvy in how we buy products and services. And because I've been doing this for so long, a little ADD, a little dyslexic, I was <laughs> able to pick up on that really quickly and started actually writing the book in 2010 and created that process because I'm a computer geek. I love computer geek. <laughs> uh, and if I don't have a process, I can't do anything. So I created the, the three Ds of reputation and I help clients understand. And it's discover, define, and develop. And people always go right to the develop and they skip the discover and the define part. So by the time they are struggling and they talk to me, they've already developed a website, a marketing message, printed a uh, logo, a color, a uh, pitch, a uh, 30 second commercial, which unfortunately is all wrong. <laughs> You so have you're to completely you, redo it. So you're saying you need that direction and vision before you go to develop, and people sometimes just jump ahead straight to develop. Absolutely, they're more worried about the color of their logo yeah. and their WordPress blog website instead of the actual marketing message that touches and starts building relationships with their clients. Client, we don't want to be talked at anymore. We want to be partnered with. Yeah. And if you engage me in a conversation about for example, your company, I will tell you exactly what I, I think. But if you don't take that information and roll it into how and what you're doing, you're going to lose. You're just going to lose. How, how do you get small businesses or the businesses you work with to find the importance of having that direction and the, the, you know, the discover and definition part? Well, it's funny and it's kind of sad because most folks who reach out for support are struggling. Yeah. And they say, well, we have three months to turn this around. And I'm like, well, sorry. <laughs> 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 three months. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really good, but I'm not magical. Right. So, yeah. um, I, I have learned probably 15 years ago, nobody does this on their own. 
you have to have a great, I call them the, mine are uh, the fabulous five. I have five mentors around me that at any given moment I can call and they will have not hesitate and actually have some joy in saying, Pam, you're crazy. Stop mm -hmm. doing that. Or that's a good idea. You should probably develop and get back to me on how, where you're going with that. So uh, most importantly for small business owners, no one does it alone. Lone Ranger's dead. Tonto's dead. We need to, we need to work together and find synergy with other uh, mm -hmm. folks. And you and I were talking about you guys. You and I just had this this immediate synergy, and we're still, you know, working on that. It's a great, it's a great thing. So yeah. people, uh, and especially women, think it's a weakness to ask for help. You know, I've never had that. Uh, I was always like, you know, exactly where I stand on almost yeah. everything. Look, y'all are you're all shaking your hands. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> we know exactly where Pam is. So <laughs> I, I think I think folks. Unfortunately, are very, are very much in a um, uh, uh, flight uh, risk when they when they reach out for help. So I always recommend reaching out early. Get your get your um, very strong supporters around you, and don't ever let them go. You know, I'm 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 really glad you started talking about that, and I'm really glad you started talking about mentors. First, I I do want to say, you know, I. <laughs> In high school and college, they say, and I know it's a little bit different, but they say plagiarizing is a bad thing. <laughs> I think, you know, using a what works and not creating the wheel, um, is, is the smart thing to do. I mean, you, you find what other people do, what works, and you copy it and maybe even make it better and put your own spin on it. Absolutely. Never start at zero. Never, yeah. I keep starting over. That just doesn't make any sense to me. For, <laughs> yeah, it makes it, yeah. for example, I want to be the female Tony Robbins. Yeah. Because there ain't one. So there, you don't think I've, I've studied his model. <laughs> I studied uh, Dale Carnegie's model. Mm -hmm. And we're actually going to, and I didn't get to talk to you, but we're actually licensing the reputation factor training program to coaches or consultants so that you can use the, the model I created in your own business. Yep. That's, your own business. That's, that's awesome. awesome. What's the time frame for something like that to be launched out? Is it happening now? Uh, well, you know, you gotta take care of the legal stuff first. So yeah. you also need a good attorney, which I have an awesome attorney. Uh, the materials are about 50% done, and I would say the licensing agreement, which is the most important on my part and for my licensees, is probably like six months out. Awesome. So we're, we're pretty close. Good. Pretty close. You had mentioned, um, your Fab Five, and mm -hmm. I, until about a year and a half ago, I really didn't understand how important having mentors were. And I, I recently, you know, started having a mentor. Um, I guess about a year and a half ago is when, when I started and we met every week. And I'll tell you what, it's someone that can really hold you accountable with things. Mm -hmm. And I think the development for me has been, um, it's, it's been awesome. I've developed and grown more as a person in the past year and a half than I think I have in my whole life. And it's because I had that person there and that mentor. And I, I find myself, I need to have more, you know, one, maybe just a personal mentor, another one, a mentor in this area of my life, another one in this area of my life. Cause then you get those, you know, different, uh, different aspects and different, um, ideas on, how, on what you can do and, and make it your own. But, do you want to talk, and I know you spoke on a little bit, but do you want to talk maybe just about the importance of having that in separate areas of your life? Yeah, and I think, I think when you reach a certain age and level, you can't really go any further mm -hmm. on your own. <laughs> and, you know, you do need, that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you said that because most people when you say, well, you need a personal mentor, a business mentor, a, a, a spiritual mentor, you need a bunch of different mentors. Yeah. And uh, mine are, um, we're started out as business mentors, but we have become friends. And just be clear, your mentor is not there to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. That's not what your mentor does. They do hold you accountable. But a good mentor will say, well, it's been my experience when I did this, this happened. And you have to be the one to make that decision. You're the one that's accountable. But yeah, mentors come in all different shapes and sizes, and a lot of uh, great mentors are your professors from college. And I talk a lot to college students, and I say, you're crazy if you don't take advantage of the opportunity and access 
you have to these fabulous people who devoted their lives to education and you're blowing them off. Yeah. What is wrong? <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, you, you, you can't do it alone and you gotta get these mentors. My, a follow up to that. And I think one thing that, that we've always done is, is we made sure that we, we can take something and teach whether it's the first step or whatever. What's, what's, if a, if a young entrepreneur comes to you and says, you know, I'm, I'm looking for, I'm looking for a mentor, but I'm having issues finding one. How did you go about finding your mentors or how would you give advice for somebody to go out and find those people? Well, you know, I have a unique spin on everything and my, um, what I found most successful is I watch what people do. I rarely listen to what they say because it's usually two different things. So I, I really, really <laughs> watch and, and see how people react and how they conduct themselves and, you know, they say one thing and do another thing. Maybe not the person that I need um, to do to to be involved with. Because, and again, as far as reputation, if you have a mentor which is not really looking out for your best interest, you're not the first one that that happened to, right. and they have a reputation that may not be good. So, if you're aligning yourself with somebody who has a bad reputation, eh, that is going to reflect negatively on you. Mm-hmm. So you have to be really aware of who you put around you. So if you're in a m- group of friends and you mention someone's name and they roll their eyes, you might need to rethink that and look at look at yeah. that a little bit more. Right. But yeah. yeah, and and I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years. I watch a webinar every week to learn something new. I watch three on Friday. Wow, that's awesome. Wow. You can't ever stop learning or seeing someone else's point of view. I totally agreed on a couple of things and then totally disagreed on the other thing. But that's what that's all about. No, yeah. right, absolutely. And you're not always, I mean, one of my goals for 2016 is to invest more in me, um, invest my finances and classes and, and personal growth. And obviously that's something that you've, that you've touched on. Where do you go for those classes or those, those webinars? YouTube. There you go. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> or I, I find somebody who is in the industry who is way more successful and a lot smarter than I am. And I just follow them. And LinkedIn is another great stalking, t- I mean, networking tool. Um, I found the person who was on the front of my book through LinkedIn, uh, Jonathan Baskin, is a guru in the world of reputation, which you guys never heard of him. But in, in, in reputation, he's a guru. I stalked him on, I mean, I followed him on LinkedIn <laughs> and then finally got the nerve to ask him if he would write a quote for my book. And he emailed like 30 minutes later and said, absolutely. That's awesome. You know, so it's, yeah. I, I sent him the book and he wrote me a quote. That's awesome. It's amazing what you can get if you just ask for it. You know, ask for what you want. And people who are in certain positions who you think, you know, may never want to meet with you will if you just show them that you're willing to put in the work for yourself. Absolutely. And one caveat to that. When you, I met a a woman who is a a host of a national talk show and I went out and I spoke to her and she actually mentioned my name on stage and the book and said, you you have to buy this book. And she said, Pam came up to me and she knew exactly what she wanted me to do. She said, never go up to anybody and say, I need your help. Can you help me out? You have to have a specific ask. Mm -hmm. So you have to have the cojones to ask, <laughs> but you also have to have it thought out to make sure you're asking specific. They don't have time to figure wow. out what, like on a resume, when you put your job, you put any, why, why would you allow anybody else to decide <laughs> what you're doing? If you can't decide, <clears throat> they're not going to decide. I'm, so, yeah. I'm, I'm really glad you said that because I think, you know, people, especially successful people, when you give them clear direction, and they're more receptive to that than if you're vague. And you have to ask. I think they respect that a little bit. Yeah, that means you thought it out. Yep. So, I mean, if somebody comes up to me and says, I need you to help me do something, and I, I'm just looking at it blankly going, yeah, I know I can help you, but I'm not <laughs> sure what you want. <laughs> right. So yep. Don't confuse people, but yep. be specific and have it well thought out because you don't want to, like, you know, get up there and ask for something and, and make kind of an ass out of yourself. Yeah. You need to be, if you're not focused, they can't help you. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we can, we can dive into some questions about, you know, the art of running red lights and kind of where the concepts came from and 
Um, obviously, we're not going to tell too much about the book because we want everybody to go out and, and uh, get it themselves and really dive in and learn from it. Um, yeah, it's I, a cliffhanger. No. Yeah, yeah, just give them just enough. <laughs> it, it's get just in there like afterwards. Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, now, this book not. was actually a follow-up to your first one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So we talk about reputation and, and how important it is and, and how that really trumps everything. Um, because really, if you think about it, I know in the book you talk about a lot about electronics because, well, I want to buy a TV. And it used to be, well, it's this one or this one, and here's your two options. But realistically now, we all we all go in and, and we, we look at 10,000 different options and which one's best and which one has, you know, which one has all the features. But then what do you do after that? And that's really what you talk about. And, and you really, you read what people write down and, and uh, their reviews on it. You ask friends. Um, and, and how important that reputation factor is. And I know Zach has a, a ton of great questions for you, but really, that's really what it is. You can market it all you want and say, we're the best, but is that really going to sell you? And, and, and realistically, that's, that's what the book, book talks about and really how to build that reputation for yourself. What I know we, we touched on a little bit earlier, but why don't we go into a little bit more about why is your passion behind the reputation of business? You know, and, you know, that's a really good question. I'm still trying to actually figure that one out, but uh, my passion to help Businesses succeed. Um, I think I was I was named the fixer in 1999, I and I, I think I have found and created a process that is successful. We've helped thousands of businesses transition from a branding mindset, we're the best, to a reputation mindset. Is because you know Justin and Zach are saying I'm the best. That's a totally different way of doing business. So I think it's uh, game changing, and I think it's uh, you know, branding started 150 years ago with putting the red hot poker on the ass of a cow, right? <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. Your clients are smart. They know a lot about you. So if you start talking in a different tone or about different things, you're going to start thinking there's something a little bit shady. Right. And they'll walk and they'll go somewhere else. So I just think it's cost effective. You control it 100%. You are 100% accountable for your reputation and that you can change it as well. So that is just awesome to me. It doesn't cost, I would never say you have to do a $10,000 advertising campaign. I'd say change the, the message on your cell phone. That's where we can start. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which is pretty, pretty easy and doesn't cost a whole lot. Exactly. Good. Exactly. Yeah. You, you talked about, in the book, and something that really kind of struck a chord with me, because obviously you see all these corporations and they spend four million dollars on an advertisement for the Super Bowl. This is something that's—it's not exactly quoted, but you know, you spend four million dollars on an advertisement for Super Bowl, and I'm not going to drink your beer just because you have fancy horses on your advertising. Um, right. But if you took that four million dollars and invested in in research, or invested in customer service, or invested in a training program for your staff, how much more well off will you be? Right, um, no, or give it, you could give it to me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would be I'll, totally I'll buy your good. beer if you give me the four million. <laughs> I would, I, and I say I watch the Super Bowl and I don't, I don't drink that beer. I don't eat Doritos, you know, and I never bought a Volkswagen. So <laughs> I, I'm not sure where that 400 million went, but you know, give me a couple hundred million and I, I could probably create some results, but <laughs> exactly. I don't know. Exactly. So I, I have a lot of, questions here and I'm thinking about which ones to ask, but I'm not going to look at them. I thought of a question that I wanted to ask you while we were talking. You, when we talked about discover and define, how does a company know how to define themselves? For example, Apple, their mission statement when they first started wasn't about their products, wasn't about technology. And now it is. They, they kind of changed their mission statement and their vision to what they do. And, you know, look at Pepsi's mission statement. It has nothing to do with soda. It just has to do with what they want to do for, you know, people's lives and enriching the community. How does, how does a company or even a small business, how do you know how to define yourself? Okay. So what you have to do is go in order. So you have to discover first. Okay. The discover will take you to the define and the define will take you to the develop. So if you discover your demographic, the people who are actually using your services, let's just say females 20 to 30 years old, and they use your product, and they come up with these amazing uh, reasons that you would have no clue about. So you now have marketing uh, uh, information. You have research. So you get this information from your customers. 
you don't have it because you're not experiencing what is happening when you're using your product and service. The other thing is most small business owners have tunnel vision and they're complacent and then they get lazy. But if you if you engage your customers and you know exactly why they're using your product and services, that'll tell you what your company needs to be based on that feedback. I have a, a retail client who owns a camera store and part of their their um, services are, you know, the typical photos and things like that. But they, they, they go on these day trips. So they'll get a bus, they'll bring, people bring their cameras, and they'll go to these different locations. And he says, I don't know where else to take these people. And I said, well, why don't you ask them where they want to go? <laughs> and he looked at me like, what? I said, you have, these, you have these classes. You have 60 to 70 people in your store. Why don't you just ask them where they'd want to go? So the next the next time I go in with the consulting, he hands me this stack of about an inch of stack papers. I said, Whoa, well, what's this? He goes, read some of these. I asked the people where they want to go. And these people have these amazing locations they wanted to go. He said, I would have never thought of half of these. Wow. I said, See, <laughs> your clients are smarter than you are when it wow. comes to your product and service. You're an expert in your industry. But as far as knowing how and and how your services impact your clients, if you don't ask them and you don't know that, you're going to lose. Yeah, that's huge. That's that's really interesting when you think about how many companies out there, and it's something that's so simple, right? As asking your your customers, and you think about all the even small businesses out there, or I will even say large corporations who just don't think of that. And why they need people like you to, to tell them the importance of that. And it, it's so simple. And I, I tell my small business owners, you are not capable of answering that question. You don't yep. have the answer. Yep. Your customers have the answer. And then the people go, well, I do survey. And I said, oh, okay. And it's like 27 questions. It takes <laughs> two hours to fill out. And they're like, yeah. yeah, nobody fills out my my surveys. And I'm like, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> why would they? Why would yeah. they? So my surveys are three questions. It's multiple choice or comment. And there's no like range one to 10, which really pisses me off because yeah. what is a one and what is a 10? I have no idea. <laughs> so my surveys are short and I say, you know, they don't fill out your surveys, but they fill out mine. Right. And if they don't fill out the survey, then we need to change it next time. I have a customer doing a survey to see if their customers want to be surveyed. Yeah. 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 Here's your, fill out the survey. I want to know if you want to be surveyed. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? I love that. It worked too. Wow. It worked. And they said, that's one of the questions was how often would you, because you don't want to annoy people right. and you don't want to wait too long because they think you don't care. And that time frame, which is the sweet spot, you have no idea. You're kind for puzzle. Right. And I think a lot of times with business owners, and I don't know if you run into this with your clients, but it's hard for them to get out of their own way. You know, mm. I think I think a lot of people in business go, well, I know how to do it, so why should I listen to somebody else? Um, <gasps> no, you don't. You <laughs> right, exactly. Honey, you don't. <laughs> so, so how? I mean, is that something that you coach with people to say, hey, you know, how would you go about doing that? Like, say, I'm this, I'm the, I'm a stubborn business owner, and I go, well, I've been doing it this way for 20 years. It's working. What what would you what would you say or do with these people to, to make them realize that hey the, the you know your reputation and your customers are the most important part and this is how you address that? Well, I have to go into negotiation. So if I allow, if it, 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 some people just don't want to change. So you know, hey, see ya, adios, I'm out of here. But if I can usually negotiate one attempt to prove to them this process works, and it doesn't usually cost any money, maybe some time. But if I can prove myself, and I don't really expect everybody to throw their branding ideas out, you know, just give me, give me a little bit and let's prove the process. And as, as it proves itself and we start growing the business, then we can open the door. But ego in business is an issue, but if I can negotiate and prove to them, right. prove to them that this is effective, it, I, I always get it. Always. Right. That's awesome. Nice. Good. So I thought I thought of another question and talking about <clears throat> talking about the gentleman with surveying him in the camera shop. Um, and it, it just got me thinking about how people find information and, and want to maybe change their definition of them. 
maybe it's the business climate, maybe it's where just the where um, the economy is going right now, or where where the new generation is thinking. For example, McDonald's. They they seem to want to be changing their reputation from okay, I'm a I'm a fast food company that uh, has burgers and fries and fatty foods to more of a healthy option. And I feel like they're having a lot of trouble with that because people still have that mentality that it's this fast food unhealthy place. Um, with a company like that, maybe just on a smaller scale, how do you really how do you change that? What are some steps you can take? Well, the first thing I would have uh, recommended to uh, McDonald's is they needed to get their customers involved. Yeah. Ask them. You know, maybe they don't want multigrain with uh, a ton of mayonnaise on it. Why don't they? Why don't like Burger King make it my way? You know, <laughs> instead of the little box. But um, you really need to contact and engage your clients uh, of a demographic that you want. And you're probably nine times out of ten the demographic you want is not the one that wants you. So then you can't have your feelings hurt, you know, and take your ball and go home. You know, that's not really how we play this thing. There's no crying in baseball. Uh, so we really need to follow your customers. Yeah. And we're, you know, I would love to say I've had a lot of women's group hire me to talk to women. And I would love to say that was my demo. That was my pick. That was not my pick. They, they chose me. And guess what? I'm not stupid. I will go with whoever, whichever demographic wants to hear my my right. Uh, message. Right. right. So that's no ego. I have no ego yeah. at all. Man. I want to be successful and continue to do what I love. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how everything just goes back to the customer, right? When it is. It's a customer centric world. We yeah. have the internet twenty four seven, um, cable news shows. You know, good. Well, you know, because it's on the internet, it's true. But you know, <laughs> we have access twenty four seven to more information we could yeah. ever use in our whole entire lives. So you have to stop treating your clients like they're stupid. Yeah, they're not stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, in, in your book, you had some really good information about um, how customers find information or what they believe. I think it was. 90% believe what they read online, mm -hmm. um, all the way down to 14% only trust what they see uh, with advertising. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to change your, you know, your brand, is there is there a different way to educate customers? And then is there a different way to edu to you know do branding? What would you recommend would be the best way? Um, again, engaging them in how their your product and service affect you, but also finding out where they are. I, 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 it's constant. I have clients that go, well, I have to go on Facebook. And I'm going, why? Well, because everybody's on Facebook. And I'm like, you know what? Not everybody's on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, not everybody, and I don't believe every industry is successful on using social media. Right. Uh, you can't sell on social media. You can educate. And you know those viral videos? They probably have a million or two million in production in each one of those viral uh, videos. Right, and, yeah. you know, just like uh, the Geico commercials ever since Buffett bought it, they're hysterical. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we get into contests of who hates the Peter Pan kid. Oh. <laughs> right. Oh, I know. Right. So that's engaging. That's not just branding your brand. You're building a reputation. For now, again, on the other hand, I never changed auto insurance because of that. Right. So it's just Buffett has more money than anybody and he can, he's spending, I think, two and a half million dollars a year and he said he would spend more if his board would let him. Right. So. Yeah, I've never, I've never switched car insurance based off of insurance or based off of commercials. And it's funny because I actually just had this conversation the other day with somebody. Um, and I, I really, really dislike flow. There's, <laughs> there is literally this hate inside of me for flow. I have progressive though. <laughs> you know, so it, it had nothing to do with flow. It's the fact that I, I went and I shot prices and they were the cheapest and the best coverage. So flow wins. Right. Um, but yeah. you know, it, it, it's not, it's not the commercial, but it does, like you said, it engages us. We have those conversations of, oh, that Peter Pan Geico commercial. Well, I'm talking about Geico. So the name's out there. And when, uh, you know, the person who doesn't know too much about car insurance goes, I need car insurance. Geico is the first one that comes to mind. Right. So there are certain ways that that works. 
But realistically, I've never, ch- I've never chosen and you've never chosen off of a commercial that you see. Right. And the, the other really pet peeve one I have is the, uh, plastic creepy Burger King commercials. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh. They spend, I don't know, hundreds of millions of dollars to promote this plastic creepy king <laughs> and they actually lost market share wow. during his reign. You know, I'm saying give me that much money. You can, Get a better menu, clean up your damn dirty restaurant, yep. you know, and clean up your parking lot. That's what yeah. I would have recommended that they did with it, not that creepy, weird thing. Yeah, and you're, you're marketing towards children. The last thing you want is some creepy king with a plastic face chasing <laughs> you around. And you know, yeah. they will, they fired that agency that they were working with, but they will never, they will not admit who their target audience was. They yeah. will not disclose that. Yeah, because they don't want to look like fools. Well, if anybody knows the CEO of Burger King, Pam Gockley is ready yeah. to, to be your, uh, your consultant there, so. A hundred million or so would just, I'd be fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> we, we turn that ship around, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I just have one more question. I was just curious because I thought of it. We, you know, we talked a lot about companies that, um, have opportunity with, with their branding. They probably already had a lot of first impressions of customers. Maybe some they haven't, but how important is the first impression? to a customer or consumer? I think first impression is extremely important. So you always want to put your your best foot forward. So if you're going to a business meeting, you don't want to be in shorts and flip flops. Mm-hmm. Those kind of things, I think we're all grown up enough to know you need to comb your hair or you need to not have a dirty face and just like well, no, you can. You, I love your bald head. I love that. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I, I, we're videoing on Skype, but I just pointed to my <laughs> bald head. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and as far as your business, you know, if you have a retail store, it needs to be clean. you you need to greet your clients. And I think, and you know, unfortunately, retail really does miss that. And that is actually my third book, but I won't bring that up now. But um, mm. first impression Neither. is mm. always important. But I also think you can fix it. You're going to need to work a little harder, dig a little deeper in order to redo uh, it, yeah, your first impression. You only get one chance of your first impression. But you, you, in my opinion, can fix it. So let's say I go to the grocery store and I buy a box of tomatoes and every one of them is rotten and I'm super pissed and I take them back and they give me a brand new box of really good tomatoes. So my first impression wasn't good but they fixed it by acknowledging, apologizing, telling me that, that they'll work really hard so this doesn't happen again, and assured me, and then gave me uh, a new box of really that's good. Awesome. Right. That's how you do it. It's it really that simple. Instead of getting defensive and saying, "Oh, these tomatoes are fine," you know, you know, you have to acknowledge, uh, apologize, fix, and you know, make sure that they understand that you're going to make sure this. Doesn't happen again. That's right. awesome. Good. Yeah, that's huge. So, do you do you have anything you want to add to what we're doing here before we get into our quote unquote rapid fire questions? Uh, let's see. Uh, just that you know, if you are a struggling business and you uh, continue to do the same thing and expect different results, we all know that's insanity. I think what I've done is create a process where you have an alternative, and it's a very low risk, low cost alternative to try and roll into your business a little bit to see the results. Awesome. So I have I have five questions here. The first four can be answered in one sentence or one word. And then the last one is actually a question that we're going to end every single podcast with. Oh. Um, but the first one is, what's one thing you can't live without? My tea. Tea. Is that every morning? Every morning. There you go. Afternoon and night. <laughs> All day long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's other vices that are that are that are worse. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So this is a, a two two answers. So what's your favorite and least favorite word? My favorite word is awesome, and my least favorite word is shit. <laughs> nice, nice, <laughs> nice. Hate that word. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the best advice you can offer others who want to grow a business? In, Get out of one, your head. Perfect. Get out of your head. It's not about you. It, it starts with you. It's not about you. Get out of your head. Awesome. I like that. Why are you successful? Because I'm out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. No, I've reached out for help in 
and identified areas that are weak. I don't want to do accounting. Oh my gosh, no. So I identified my weak areas and I hired really very, 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 very smart people. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so many successful people say, focus on what you're good at and let other people handle the stuff you're not good at. Uh, you know, get, get great at what you're good at. You know what I mean? And don't worry about the bad stuff. That's yeah, great. get better. You have to get better. That's awesome. And the last one is, is something we want to end every podcast on because obviously this is called the growth now movement. Uh, so it's a question about growth and it's, what was your biggest moment of growth personally or professionally or both? When I published the first book, that was definitely, definitely, I'm a dyslexic. I have a learning disorder and the fact that I could actually get an editor and another editor <laughs> <laughs> to help me publish this, my first book, that was the pinnacle. Uh, no one in my family's ever owned a business. No one's ever went to college and no one's ever wrote a book. So that was a pretty good day. That's um, awesome. That's yeah. really, really cool. That's a, that's a huge accomplishment. Well, well, Pam, thank you so much for joining us. And, and I want to sincerely say that we're honored to have you on our first actual interview yeah. episode because, because like, like we said earlier in the podcast, we've had such a connection from day one and you've been there to support us and hopefully we can continue to support you and, and what you're doing in the third book that's coming as we got a little teaser here. <laughs> Very exciting. Um, now, Pam, just to, to kind of wrap things up, how can people get a hold of you? Well, my website, uh, actually is the reputationfactor.com and the order running red lights.com where we'll be announcing shortly our new company, uh, revamped Gockley Associates. So it's called Reputata. Nice. And it enco- encompasses everything that I do, the coaching, mentoring, consulting, in addition to the licensing for the reputation factor training program. Really cool, really cool. Well, we're excited. So I, I, I announced it on your podcast. Oh, we're honored. We we're honored. <laughs> we're, uh, we're super honored. But thank you so much for your time, and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank and you. actually, this won't this won't be out until afterwards, but we'll be at your book signing. So yeah. oh, nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, super nice. excited to go and, and see you there as well. Yep. All right, awesome. Thanks, Pam. Thank you, thank Pam. Thank you. Thank you for listening and joining the Growth Now movement. This podcast was created to get you to where you want to go. Hopefully it helps as you take action on your Growth Now journey.